Hey guys, welcome to another video. This video is going to be a little bit different than a standard watercolor review. We're going to talk about the paints and talk about my experiences with them and what I think about these Kuratake Gonzai Tombi paints. But I also want to talk about this piece in general and why I painted it and what it means to me. So I guess let's start with talking about the piece. Um, as you can see, I'm showing you a bit more of my setup today. The reason I got started with this piece in the first place was I was sitting in front of my computer doing some work and just feeling kind of overwhelmed and bombarded by, I don't know, just too many out outside sources, like um, too many different social media platforms and my own personal stress and anxiety. And it was all just kind of starting to pile up on me. And I was starting to think of all the different things I had to do. And it was just starting to get a bit overwhelming. And that wasn't really what I, that's never really where I wanted to be in my job as an artist and I understand that not every day is going to be perfect and wonderful but I also want to recognize these times of stress and be able to do what I can to take myself out of those situations as I can so usually when I'm feeling stressed the best thing I can think to do is sit down and paint a very large portrait so that's what I did today I got out a big 10 by 14 sheet of Arches cold press watercolor paper, pulled out these paints because I've only used them a couple other times and I wanted to do a larger piece with them and talk to you guys about them and I just sat down and I just started painting and it was an extremely relaxing experience and was really helpful to get me out of that stressed anxious place I was in. So more than anything I just want to encourage you guys that if you ever Find yourself in an environment where you just are starting to feel overwhelmed. Don't let that anxiety or stress or frustration control you. Do what you can to step out of a situation and just start doing something else. Just take control back of your own mind and remember that your life is your own and everything about you is yours. So with that kind of mushy, sentimental, personal stuff out of the way, I want to talk to you guys about these paints. I'm sure that if you are familiar with watercolor paints or have looked around on Amazon or even here on YouTube, you've heard of these paints before. The Gansai Tambi paints are pretty popular, lots of people have reviewed them before, some people really like them and some people don't. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about these paints is people try to compare them to quote unquote western watercolors and then they don't like them because these watercolors are a little bit more opaque than like Daniel Smith or Winsor & Newton watercolors or even like Schmincke and they also act a little bit differently and I want to talk a little bit about why that is. The name of these paints, which is Kuratake Genzai Tambi. That's the brand name, but it also refers to the kind of paint that they are. Ganzai is a specific type of watercolor paint. It's made a little bit differently than your quote-unquote standard or more western style paints, and it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So some things that people don't like about these paints is that when you have the paints applied, it at full strength. So if I just grab this purple color that I was using and just put a big heap of it on my paper, which does happen sometimes, not really in this piece, but the paint would dry with sort of a shiny film on top of it. And here I'll show you just a little bit of a piece I did before with these, just a little sketch that had some of that. And some people saw that and they were like, that's not professional. I can't sell pieces that are done with these paints. I don't like it. Well, no, it's not the way that like your Winsor & Newton or your Daniel Smith paints would dry, but it's exactly how Gonzai paints would dry. That's, they're meant to have that. It's because their composition is a little bit different. They're not really made the same way. Another thing that people don't really like about these paints is, or I, I shouldn't say things that people don't like, um, it, things that make people wary about these paints is that they lift fairly easily like if I was layering colors on top of others and I was wasn't being super careful the colors would lift underneath again that's not a negative towards these paints it's not because they're unprofessional or student grade paints it's because that's what they're made to do that's how Gansai paints are made to react there's a YouTuber here, Sadie Saves the Day, who has an amazing video called What is Gonzai? I'll link her video down in the description. She basically tells the same things I've told you and more about Gonzai paints and what makes them different. 
and why you shouldn't necessarily expect the same thing from them. One thing I really love about these paints is that they come in a large container of 36 colors and the pans are technically larger in size than your standard full, pa full pan size. And I like that because I use a lot of calligraphy brushes and I can lay my brushes inside the pans and I'm not banging my bristles around inside of the pans because they're larger. And again, that's why they're larger. They're, they're you know, Asian paints. They're made to be used with these calligraphy brushes, which of course you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. It's your paint. You can use them however you want to. But that's why, because, you know, the, they're calligraphy brushes, big pans, it, they, they just are meant to go together. They're made to work that way together. So my thoughts on these paints. I love them. I love that they're a bit more opaque actually. I like that they give me nice texture. They have fantastic vibrancy. Some of the colors like this, the more opaque like sort of emerald color and the periwinkle sort of bluish purple color that I used a lot in this piece you don't normally see those a lot in watercolor sets and I absolutely adore them. I know that a lot of it has to do with that they probably have like a white pigment in them and some watercolorists don't like paints that have white in them. They prefer the luminosity of a white page. And uh, oh yeah, look, there's that big pan thing I was telling you about. See how my calligraphy brushes just fit so nicely in there. Um, I Yeah, I love it. Also, that's one of the colors I was mentioning. I really enjoy working with these paints. It's definitely a different kind of experience compared to a more transparent western style watercolor, but I can't wait to use these paints more. I'm going to be doing a few light fastness tests, if that makes sense, um, with I'm planning to just take a bunch of paints of different brands, swatch them on a piece of paper, and stick it in front of a window for a week or two and see how they go with as far as light light fastness so that video should be coming to you guys you know at some point in the future <laughs> but Kuretake claims that these paints are light fast I'm sure you'll find some variants depending on the pigments and I hope that this video review isn't disappointing to you guys I know it's not your standard show me the box and show me the color charts sort of review and if that's what you're looking for there are amazing youtubers out there and artists who have done just that and they've provided thorough in-depth reviews of what these paints look like individually and what the container looks like it doesn't come with a palette because primarily because in the gonzai painting style you use the colors directly out of the pan and allow them to mix and blend together on the paper. I did some of that, but I also had like a porcelain palette that I used. And um, yeah, more than anything, I wanted to talk to you guys about how I felt using these paints and my general experiences with them overall. And that was that I really like them. What you're seeing here, these white highlights were actually done with my white Gonzai Tanbi paint. So it can actually be layered up pretty opaquely and lays pretty nicely, you know, on top of other colors, which is really interesting. So no, these aren't the same as other watercolors, but for the price, I believe they're somewhere around 30 US dollars, something like that. The price fluctuates on Amazon depending on when you find them. I think they're an exceptional value. And if you had $30 and you were looking to buy some paints to have some fun with, I would definitely recommend these. I really enjoyed working with them, and to be honest, I can't wait to sit down and paint with them some more. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Oh, and one of my New Year's resolutions was to sign more of my art. So I don't know how much of my art that you guys have seen that's actually been signed, but it's not very much because I always, always forget to sign my art. Like, it's just... I, I, I don't know, I, I just always forget. Anyway, I know it's not good practice. Trying to do better, trying to sign more paintings. Um, I'm really happy with this painting. I think it's my favorite thing that I've ever painted, ever. So I like drawing really big faces and this was a fantastic learning experience. Thanks so much for watching and listening to me ramble a bit, guys. And oh, oh my goodness, thank you for 5,000 subscribers. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. I will talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful weekend. And okay, yes, goodbye, bye.